Uh, good morning, I'm Christopher Niergish and I'm with the School of Self-Reliance. We're here in Salt Lake City, beautiful Salt Lake City, and it's uh, snowy today and rainy, it's cold. Uh, and we're hoping to meet all of the people that come here to the survival show. Uh, I've been teaching survival skills for 30 some years. Uh, I teach the primitive skills and I teach that if you have skills and you practice them, you don't need a whole lot of stuff. Things are important, but I de-emphasize the things over the skills. I'd like to show you a book that I wrote. This is my most popular book, How to Survive Anywhere. And I hope everybody gets a copy and reads it. It's a great book. This is my most recent book, Self-Sufficient Home. And in this book, I talk about how people in their home can be more self-reliant by growing their own food, producing their own power, saving rain, all of that kind of stuff. Now, the types of things that I emphasize in my classes are how you can go out and uh, find your own food and your own medicine from plants. For example, uh, you can't see a whole lot of it here, but we went around town in uh, Salt Lake City this morning and we found, we found rose hips and chicory. If you see the rose hips over there and strawberries, yeah, if you could hold that up, Helen, look at that. So that's all food from the roadside of um, Salt Lake and some out here in the parking lot, as well as lamb's quarter and wild mints. So in my classes, I emphasize that the more of the natural environment that you know, the better off you are. Here we are in Utah, a state named after the Ute Indians and the Paiutes, and so many of these skills came from Native Americans that I teach. For, for example, the state flower here in Utah, I know people outside of Utah are going to see it, but the seagull lily saved a lot of people during a famine in the late 1800s. And those are the kind of skills that I try to teach. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm big on fire, because fire is something you should know. But here with a steel striker, you can make fire like so. And let's walk around here. I want to show you some of the other plants that I teach people. I brought a lot of yucca, and this is found all over the state. This is really like nature's hardware store when I show people this. And when you shred it, you get stuff like this, like fine fiber. Okay, And look what I've been making. If you know how to twine, you have useful twine for making sandals, making ropes, making nets, making fish hooks, all sorts of things. So this is a really good skill that people can practice. Uh, even if, um, even if you, you folks watching get thrown in prison and it's a bum rap, you can take your bed sheets. If you know how to twine, you can make some rope to escape with. And uh, here's a traditional Native American type of a brush that I threw together in a hurry actually from yucca. They used it for cleaning their rocks and their stones, but it could be softened and used for cleaning your skin and so forth. And then uh, I also was demonstrating the, um, the hand drill, the primitive way to make fire. You gotta do it on the ground. You wanna, wanna see a little demo on the ground? Okay, so this is how people made fire in the old days. Well, I'm not actually going to start it, but I'm just going to do a show you how it's done. And uh, mostly, mostly I'll make smoke if I can, like so. See the smoke rising? So if you don't pass out, you do it until you get dust right here. But the easier way is the bow and the drill. I'll give you a little demo on that. Any of you folks ever done this before? Okay. So the this is your friction point, and that's really critical. Okay. You've got a little notch. The notch is critical because you have to get all the dust and the ember to go into there. All right. You said dust. Well, yeah. You're going to get dust as you drill. Wood dust. Right. Wood dust. This is a slippery floor. But the dust goes into the notch. Oops. The dust goes into the notch and you do it until you get a sufficient amount and then you blow it into a flame. Let me do that. See the rock that I used for a bearing? So I go to the beach and I get rocks like this, which you could also use for other things, but they're hard to find these. Otherwise you have to use wood, you know, that you oil or bone. So, yeah, it's hard to find those at the beach. Some places you can find a lot of them. 
I twist this on. Let me try again. But the rule of thumb is you do it until you get a call or you pass out. All right. Well, you want dry wood, obviously. I'm using willow, which I like. And you have willow here in Utah, and you have it all over the world. I'm not sure if the fire marshal is going to take a be happy about this, but I'm doing it for this guy, for the Survivalist magazine. Okay, so look at the dust that's collected. The black stuff in that notch. So that's how you do it. See it's still smoking? That's success. Now if I was in the woods, I'd put this into some tinder, blow on it, all the fire alarm things would go off in here, and we get sprinklers probably. But this is what you get. See? But I didn't come here to make fires inside the convention hall. But that's that's success. Then you put that into sufficient, you know, proper tinder. I'm going to put it out. So, my website for people who want to take the classes and learn about the books and the videos is uh, www. It's either self-reliance.net or www. christophernyerges.com. And uh, I hope you all come to the site. If you have questions, there's the email on the site that you can contact us with.